the king of the north! I am the dragon's daughter. Hello, sweet summer children. This Sunday is Game of Thrones season seven, The Wolf and the Dragon. It's the finale and stuff is going down. So let's talk about it. Before we talk about it, Audible has graciously sponsored this video. Audible is an app for audiobooks. I use it all the time. I use it all the time on my phone. I use it at work, in the car, at the gym, in the shower, whenever I can. If you want to read the books and you feel like it's a lot to read five huge books, Audible is the way to go. You can sign up for a free trial and your first book is free. They have hundreds of thousands of books. I'll leave the link below. If you sign up, it'll really help my channel. But anyway, I feel like the event I am the most excited to see is the meeting in King's Landing at the Dragon Pit. As you can see in the picture from the episode 7 trailer, we have this huge ruin with three canopies inside of the ruin. The ruin is none other than the Dragon Pit. The Dragon Pit is a huge ruin atop Rainy's Hill in King's Landing. King's Landing is made up of three hills. On Rainy's Hill is the Dragon Pit. On Aegon hill is the red keep and on Visenya's hill was the sept of Baylor. the dragon pit was ordered to be constructed by magor the cruel and was used to house the targaryens dragons the pit is enormous and 30 knights could ride their horses abreast through the entrance of the dragon pit some craziness also has occurred at the dragon pit previously during the dance of dragons the common folk stormed the dragon pit and killed about five of the targaryen dragons the pit was burned to a ruin and when brendan rivers aka blood raven aka three-eyed raven when he was handed the king during the great spring sickness he had all of the dead bodies dumped into the dragon pit and he ordered the pyromancers to burn them with wildfire the dragon pit looks a lot like the ruins of Valyria. History lesson over. So, so we have a lot of the main cast in one spot. This hasn't happened since season one, episode one. In the dragon pit, we have John, Masande, Brienne, Pod, Davos, Theon, Tyrion, Jorah, Varys, Bronn, Cersei, Jaime, and Kyburn. These are the people that we can see in the preview. But we can also see the Greyjoy fleet outside of King's Landing, and we have Euron Greyjoy's flagship, the Silence. Wherever Silence is, Euron is, which means Euron will likely be there. Daenerys' whole army is outside of the gates of King's Landing, so there is no way she's not going to come to this meeting. I have her making just a huge entrance on the back of Drogon. I think her entrance into King's Landing might be the dragon wing shadows that we've seen above King's Landing several times from Bran's visions. Also, if Cersei is at the Dragon Pit, best believe the mountain will be at the Dragon Pit. In the trailer, the first trailer way, way back before the season started, a trailer was released by HBO. And it shows who most people said was the Hound, and it looks like he's in the Dragon Pit as well. The Hound has this box behind him, and in this box is probably the proof. The proof of the undead white. The proof that Viserion died for. The proof that the Hound left Eastwatch with on his own in episode 6. So in the pit, there will be some reunions. But let's talk about getting to the pit. Tyrion was arriving by ship. Considering that everyone that is with him in this photo arrives the same way, they will use the Mudgate, which means they will have to walk all the way through the people of King's Landing to get all the way to the Dragon Pit. Who knows? With the way things are going with the speed of the episode, we might just turn on the TV and they're already in the Dragon Pit. The shot of Jamie and Bronn, they are looking at the Unsullied in the Dothraki. I'm almost sure the Unsullied in the Dothraki are indeed outside of the Dragon Gate. They could be at any of these gates, but I think they would want to be closest to Daenerys and closest to the Dragon Pit, which is the Dragon Gate. So let's talk reunions. The Hound will be reunited with the Mountain and also Brienne. I wonder if the Hound will ask Brienne about Tormund. Like, you know, like, hey, Brienne of Tarth, I was with your man beyond the wall and he's insane. 
Also, Brienne will be reunited with Jamie, and Pod will be reunited with Tyrion and Bronn. Cersei and Jamie will be reunited with Varys. Tyrion will be reunited with Cersei and the Hound. And Jon hasn't seen Cersei or Jamie since the very beginning of season one. And a lot has happened since then. So will Cersei join the one fight that matters? No, absolutely not. If you know Cersei, you know she's not stupid, but she's not as smart as she thinks she is. Cersei would die before she ever thinks of bending the knee to Daenerys. She will never do it. In episode 5, Eastwatch, Cersei said she needs to be clever and make more moves like Tywin. So whatever she does with this ceasefire opportunity, it will be clever, but I don't think she's going to help them at all. I think as soon as they go north, Cersei is going to sweep right in and take whatever ground they took from Cersei already. I'm just so pumped to see all the reunions and all the conversations that are to be had in King's Landing. So we will have the mountain and the Hound. I want Clegane Bowl, you want Clegane Bowl, but I doubt we will get Clegane Bowl. We haven't even got Ghost yet. We're not getting the Mountain and the Hound. Hashtag free ghost. Before we move on to Winterfell, um, uh, yeah, let's talk about this title. The title of the episode is The Dragon and the Wolf. What could that mean? Well, to me, it screams Rhaegar and Lyanna. At first, you might think it's about Jon and Danny, but technically, Jon is a dragon wolf and Danny is a dragon, so it will be called Dragon Wolf Dragon. The dragon must be Rhaegar and the wolf must be Lyanna. So it's like, are we gonna get another Tower of Joy moment, like a flashback? We haven't seen Sam since episode five when he left the Citadel. He was frustrated with the Maesters because they wouldn't help him with the Long Night, so we can only assume that he's heading north to help with the long night if he's headed for the wall he has to stop in winterfell in episode five gilly uncovered a journal that said prince rhaegar had an annulment and was married in a secret ceremony in dorne so could we get to see that on screen could we get to see rhaegar on screen could we really get to see the man the myth the legend Rhaegar Targaryen. I don't know, but also in Winterfell there could be another reunion. If Sam does wind up in Winterfell, he could be reunited with Bran, who Sam hasn't seen since he helped Bran get north of the wall. When the snows fall and the white winds blow, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. Also, there's a lot of turmoil with Arya and Sansa. I think Arya knows Littlefinger is treacherous and she wants Sansa to see that. And hopefully, the image of Sansa looking concerned is Sansa pondering her thoughts and the Mockingbird is in trouble. It's Littlefinger's presence that is causing a rift between Sansa and Arya. Littlefinger purposefully hid that letter and set Sansa up for the okie doke. But I personally think that Littlefinger shouldn't die until we have one more chance to see Baelish and Varys in a scene together with dialogue and, you know, just playing the Game of Thrones. It would be a travesty not to have Littlefinger and Varys together on screen at least one more time. But you know, it's looking bad for Baelish. I've told you guys before that the Ghost of High Heart had a prophecy of Sansa slaying a savage giant and I think that savage giant is indeed Littlefinger and she slayed that savage giant in a castle made of snow and Winterfell really looks like a castle made of snow in this picture so I don't know guys I think Littlefinger's days are numbered I think he may, I think he might die I, I think in order for the show to move at the pace that it's moving at, I think everyone needs to be a united front by the time this season ends, which is next Sunday. And I do think that's what's going to happen. I do think by the time this episode wraps up, everyone will be a united front. Everyone with the exception of Team Cersei. I'm also curious as to what Theon is doing in this trailer picture. He's clearly back on Dragonstone, so I'm not sure if this is before or or after the dragon pit scene it could be after with the current pacing of the episodes it's hard to tell how much moving around will be done in an episode it's really hard to predict if it's after the dragon pit then we can assume that everyone that was in team danny is back on dragon zone and probably loading ships full of dragon glass and they're probably going to head to winterfell and make winterfell their fortress 
for the long night but i'm not sure if the episode will move that fast i'm interested to see where daenerys and john's relationship is going i've seen other people say ew they're related that's gross that's his aunt it th this is game of thrones and that's a Targaryen custom. Get over it. This story, with all the characters it has, has always been about Daenerys and Jon. One of the biggest questions I have, though, is will we see the Night King again? Where's Viserion and is the wall coming down? This episode is 81 minutes long, which is long. And we were left with a cliffhanger in episode 6 of a White Walker dragon. So hopefully we get to see the Night King and we get to see what he's doing beyond the wall. And then we have to get through the long night going into season 8. What are you most excited for in episode 7? As always, thanks for watching. Like this video if you like it. Please click that subscribe button and hit that notification Shame. bell and join the Sweet Shame. Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children. Shame. Have a good day.